Coming up next, food. You like food. Everybody likes food. <laughs> Stay tuned. Hit the music. Your stomach will stop growling. Camera, camera, stomach. Over. <laughs> wow, if you could only hear a stomach right now. We have three brand new cook. <laughs> no. If you're like me, you love a breakfast casserole. You know, the kind that you have around the holidays, but you have to get up a couple of hours early to throw it all together and put it in the oven. Well, this one you can make overnight. It's an overnight breakfast casserole. You will need a dozen eggs, a two pound bag of hash browns. I have the frozen kind that are diced. It's your preference. Uh, you also need at least three cups of shredded cheese. I have triple cheddar, but you can use whatever kind you like. You'll need some seasonings. You need a pound of either bacon, sausage, or ham that you've cooked and chopped up. You also need a cup of milk. So here we go. I'm gonna spray my crock pot. And you know I love a crock pot recipe because I just throw it in and go. Now you're going to take a third of your hash browns and layer it on the bottom of your crock pot. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. making this kind of like a lasagna. It's going to be in layers. Then you're going to take a third of your meat, whichever you prefer. I am using sausage and we're using a hot sausage because I like a little bit extra spice in this one. And again, you're eyeballing. Oh, I forgot one thing. Salt and pepper, a little bit of salt and pepper on this layer with your potatoes. Um, I should have done it before I put the potatoes in, but I can do it now. So I just a, just a dash. It sometimes gets a little not quite so the spices don't necessarily get all the way to the bottom layer sometimes. So a little bit of salt and pepper on the potatoes, then your meats, then a cup of cheese. Again, I'm eyeballing it. Since most of these bags are two cups, I use about half a bag. Then you're gonna throw another layer of potatoes, salt, pepper, the meat, cheese. Eventually you will end up with cheese on top. <laughs> I have made this with shredded hash browns. Um, it worked, but I like the dice better. The hash, the shredded tend, seem to get a little too mushy since it's cooking for six to eight hours, depending on if your hash browns are frozen or not. Let's do it again. Another third. Another layer of cheese. And this is one of those that you could add, you know, turkey sausage. You could, you know, add a little bit more meat if you want more. I mean, a pound was plenty. But it's one of those that you might want to just kind of play with. Just try to even that out a little bit. Now I'm going to put my last layer of potatoes on. Last layer of the meat. Now, if you're trying to watch your carbs, like I'm starting to do, because <laughs> I've noticed some some of our videos I've put on a few pounds, uh, you can use uh, chopped cauliflower in place of potatoes. You could use um, turkey bacon or sausage instead of you know pork. 
low fat cheese, um, egg substitute, and you could also add um, almond milk or something along that one. All right, so I'm gonna mix up my eggs. And I've already measured out my seasoning. You would use a uh, half of an onion diced, half teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of dry mustard, and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. You also add your cup of milk, which I've already measured up. Mix all that together. Pour this over your layers. Now top it off with another cup of cheese, or if you just like a lot of cheese, you could put the whole bag. That's up to you. <laughs> My husband would say, put the whole bag. I like cheese. It's starting to show. Now, put your lid on. If your hash browns are still frozen, you want to cook it seven to eight hours. If they're not, six to seven is fine. It just depends on how, you know, hot your crock pot tends to cook. And we'll check in on that later. All right, folks, it has been mm, six and a half hours, probably pushing seven, but let's take a look. <laughs> Ooh, yum. All right. Nice golden color on top. Let's serve up some and take a look. All right. So my potatoes are nice and soft. Cheese. Ooh, and it's hot. Get a facial while you make dinner. And that spicy sausage gives it a nice kick. I hope you enjoy this recipe and check out the next one. Our next dish was sent to us by a viewer, also known as my mom. <laughs> so this one is called Jailhouse Rice. I don't think it has anything to do with inmates, but maybe you know, so you can leave an um, answer in the comments. But it is called Jailhouse Rice. So I started out with a pound of ground beef and a pound of sausage. And I used hot sausage to kind of spice it up a little bit. Um, but you start to brown it in a skillet. And about halfway through, you add two celery ribs diced and a whole onion diced. Then you add in two cans of cream of celery soup, two cups of white rice, or brown if you prefer, and mix it together. Normally at home I do it in the skillet, but the skillet I have in the camper is not big enough. So I've already added my meats and my seasoning, some salt and pepper, then two cups of rice, and two cans of cream of celery soup. And you preheat your oven to 350 degrees, which I have already done. Now the recipe does not call for cheese, but you know, we're pigs. <laughs> add a little bit of extra, we add some grated um, cheddar cheese to ours um, when we put it together in, on, on top of the dish once I get it in the pan. And then you want to add two cups of chicken broth. So add two cups of chicken broth, because if you look at it right now, it's pretty dry. So I'm gonna get that out, because I have half a carton from when I've made it at home. We like this one. It's kind of a hearty, you know, feel good kind of meal. Not on the healthiest side, unless you want to use ground turkey or um, turkey sausage for your meats.
All right. Now that you have stirred all your ingredients together, you want to pour them into a nine by 13 um, casserole dish that has been, you know, greased, sp sprayed with some Pam. Um, my nine by 13 won't fit in our camper oven, so I brought the stoneware square dish, which I think may work better in the camper to keep everything evenly, the heat evenly distributed. And just kind of smooth that, lay it, you know, even, spread it even. All right. And then I'm going to put the cheese on it in the last 20 minutes, but I'm going to cover everything with foil tightly before I put it in the oven. oven for an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and take it out and add cheese on top if you prefer. We'll check back in a little bit. All right folks it's been about an hour and 20 minutes. I stopped it earlier and added the cheese on top. Sorry you missed that but I also almost burned my fingers so I probably would have had to have edited that out anyway. <laughs> so let's take a look. Now, I'm not gonna take the foil off yet. It's supposed to sit covered for about 15 minutes. So we're gonna leave it to sit for a while. And we're gonna go take a stroll and come back in 15 minutes and take a look then. All right, it's been 15 minutes. Let's check it out. Ooh. Cheesy goodness. All right. This thing's too hot, so I'm gonna. So you're just supposed to kind of fluff up the rice. Looks good to me. <laughs> and you can serve it up as is. You can add some vegetables that you like. Of course, you know my husband doesn't eat vegetables much at all, other than lettuce and maybe some celery. But I try to sneak some in occasion. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you enjoyed the first two recipes, don't forget that you can check our blog on liveandlearnrv.com to get all of the ingredients and measurements. Now this recipe is going to be really, really difficult. It requires three ingredients <laughs> and no measuring. It is three ingredient taco chicken. I have already sprayed my crock pot and added a pound and a half of chicken breasts. Uh, I would not increase the amount of chicken unless you're going to increase the amount of salsa because you're going to use a 16 ounce jar of salsa. If you're going to use more chicken, get a bigger jar of salsa because you're not adding any water. This is your liquid. Okay. So you are going to use one pack of taco seasoning and sprinkle that on top if I can open it. Sprinkle your taco seasoning on top of your chicken. Then open your jar of salsa and pour that on top. Set your crock pot to low for six hours or on high for four. And then we'll check back when it's ready. That's it. How easy is that? I love it. It's been six hours plus a little longer, so. Hopefully it's not too well done, but let's check on our chicken. Mm, smells good. <laughs> so you wanna get your chicken out and shred it with a couple of forks. So I'm gonna try to scrape off what I can of the salsa so I don't bring all that with me. Oh yeah, it's, <laughs> it's falling apart. It's so tender. Let's hope I can do this without making too much of a mess. Okay. 
All right, it's shredded. Now, one little tip I have learned working with crock pots when you're cooking things like chicken that you can use a hand mixer to um, shred your meat in your crock pot. But with the chicken, I kind of wanted it chunky pieces since we're putting it in, you know, like tacos and taco salad. So depending on how much liquid is left in your crock pot, you might want to um, get rid of some of the liquid so that it doesn't end up being too runny. Or if you see that the liquid has gone down, then you could just add your chicken back in. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of liquid because right now it's a little too soupy for the amount of chicken that I have. All right, I've taken out a third to half of the liquid just because it was a little bit too much. If you can see, it's a, it's a little bit chunkier looking now and not quite as soupy. Because you do want some liquid to go back with your chicken to mix it in. Just makes it that much more moist. And then you just kind of give everything a stir. Mix all of that juice and veggies together. That looks pretty good. Now let's serve it up. I have some flour tortillas. And I usually start mine with a little bit of sour cream. And some lettuce. course some cheese and then add our chicken and you can add whatever toppings you like um, like I said makes great taco salad nachos really good nachos so Here's the trick. Leave only this part, leave section empty. I've been trying to teach the hubby that. <laughs> so you can fold it over to make your burrito. That way you have a little pocket at the end so it's all those juices don't run out on top of you. I hope you've enjoyed these recipes that I've shared with you. You know, just think about the time you save using a crock pot that you can just throw everything in and then go have some fun, especially if you're weekend warriors like we are. So, you know, share this video if you liked it. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And leave us some comments if you like the recipes or have some suggestions. You know, I always like trying new ones, so let me know. And as we always say, keep living and learning.